So, Jeff, welcome to Etherton Events Saturday Showcase. Yeah, I know. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for coming into the gallery to talk about your work. And I guess the first thing I'd like to ask is, since this is such an uncertain time, you know, a lot has changed in the last couple of weeks since we hung the show. Uh -huh. What are you doing these days? You know, how are you? Uh, I'm fine, actually. I, um, whenever I hang a show, the next couple of weeks is always kind of a, what am I doing now? Kind yeah. of a question mark. And so... But I'm used to being alone, so uh -huh. with coronavirus, you know, kind of asking people to stay home and stuff, I'm very used to it, okay. and so I'm just in my studio. Uh, I've pulled out some old canvases that never worked, and I'm trying to make them work right so now. Yeah. What's your studio like? What's your working environment? Can you sort of set the stage? Um, I work in a very small studio here in Tucson. It's the bedroom of, a, of our house. So it's like 10 by 10 feet. It's, it's really insanely small because I have a desk in there too, which is just crazy. <laughs> um, my studio in Colorado, where I live most of the year, is um, <clears throat> a two-car garage that the car's never been in. So I've got, you know, it's, I've got a lot more room to do it. You know, to work in Colorado, but I made the big painting here, here in here. this ten by ten La foot Parade. room, La Parade. So it was like, you know, I'm like I, I couldn't even get back enough, far enough away to photograph it after it was over, you know, to get it into yeah. a slide camera. So it's it's this very small space. We're turning over now to the show. How did you select the work for uh, what you're showing in Go Figure? Um. I had the, the Tucson environment in mind for a long time. You know, we, um, I've been coming here since 2003, every spring. I was in the Arizona Biennial two years ago, and I had a piece in the show, and I came down to see it. And that weekend, I, I drove down to Nogales, and I walked across the border. Without, I didn't have my passport. And I asked all these border guards, you know, could I come back into the U.S. without a passport? And I got different stories. You know, one guy said, well, I wouldn't do it. But then I asked, he was, he was an ICE agent like 20 miles from the Gallus in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. But then I asked customs people right at the border building. And two different people told me, it was one guy, they were both outside the building. And I said, could I go into Nogales and come back without a passport. And the, and the, and the, uh, the first guy I asked said, um, yeah, you'll, you'll be all right. And, um, and then just to make sure, I asked another, another employee, and she's, she looks me in the eye, and she's, technically, no, but you'll be all right. You wow. know? And so I went. And then I came back, and I stood in line for 100, with 100 Mexicans, for like an hour and um, I get into the area where they look at your passports and stuff gave her my driver's license she punched in the number 10 seconds she said you're good have a nice day one of the things that I was curious about was uh, the use of numbers or the numbering uh, in your paintings I don't know if there's a system or a particular meaning that you assign to them um I started, I, for the hell of it, I started numbering stuff in 2002. And I started with number two. And everything that I've worked on since then has gotten a number. I don't number photographs, but I number drawings and mm -hmm. paintings. And I guess I, I'm up to 18 something, 1800. Yeah. So that's 18 years ago, about 100 pieces a year. They are inventory numbers. And it makes it super easy for people <laughs> like you at the gallery to say, do you have number so-and-so? And then give me the title, and then I could look it up. And, um, I like the visual look. I've always liked advertising. I've always liked um, the old photographs with the, with the descriptions underneath mm -hmm. uh, that are just written through the, written on the glass plate. Those were the government survey photographers. Yeah, that's always, that's yeah. always, I've always liked that look. 
And so I put them vi where they're visual on the paintings. Um, I started with number two, and sometimes it takes a long time to resolve a painting. And so if it's number 30, and then I come back to it a year from now, I'll put a new number on it in the current in its current position, like number 120. And then if it still isn't finished, you know, two years from now, maybe it'll get a third number. And I think I have one, one painting that's got at least five numbers on it before it was finally over. <laughs> There's a few holes in the, in the numbering system, and so I thought, I'm going to give art historians something to argue about. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, like, I like it. I like that, that nice job. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about was the use of your models. How do you find them, you know? They're my actors. You know, they're, I assign them these roles and I put them to work and, and then they take it from there. I, I find them usually at the, either at the University Rec Center here mm -hmm. or in Colorado in Boulder at the Rec Center. And I preface it and I say, I have a question for you and it's an unusual question. And then I, I go into my shtick about, I'm a painter, I take photos of people, I, I hire people to photograph for an hour and then I paint from them. I pay X number of dollars per hour. Would that be in your ballpark of interest? And um, there's there's enough people who say, yeah, sure. I think the other thing I was curious to know is, are there did you have any mentors? Are there any particular people who influenced your work? Uh, the people that stand out to me, the earliest ones, I actually you know was really interested in Norman Rockwell. Uh, back when I was in high school, and Andrew Wyeth. I would say Andrew Wyeth, and then Vincent Van Gogh. Um, I, think, I think of Van Gogh just for his dedication to his work. Uh, I think Wyeth always spoke to me about his, his, what he was painting uh, in Pennsylvania and Maine. Um, but I look at, I look at, these days, you know, there, there's lots of other people that, that I love looking at their work. I like a lot of the new figurative painters who, who've been getting some attention these days. And, and photography has always been a huge influence. I mean, I'm a photographer as well, but I, I just haven't tried showing anything in, in a thousand years. Well... You mentioned looking at magazines and books, and that's maybe a good segue. You've published a few books. You have a very active website, and I know you're also active. So I was just wondering, you know, is there anything you'd like to mention in, about your books or your website while we're here? Uh, it's jackballas.com. Um, really simple. Uh, there's no advertising on it. Nothing will twirl and flash at you. <laughs> there's no ads that move in from the right-hand side. Um, I do try to keep it up to date. I've, I'm on Instagram and Facebook with works in progress that I never put on my website. Um, and on the other, on social media, I'm also once in a while posting, you know, the sunset or patterns of shadows on the, on the sidewalk or stuff, interesting stuff out there in the world that you'll never get on the website. Uh, the books that I published are all catalogs, and I've tried to be really thorough because my work goes way back. And um, <clears throat> the, the, there's one book I put, to be, put together called Guidebook, and it's spelled G-U-Y apostrophe D. Uh, so just I'm also, I'm also interested in puns and the use of language and, and stuff like that. So If somebody wanted to buy one of your books, how would they do that? Uh, they're all on Blurb. Okay. So very easy to find. Um, yeah. Well, thanks so much, Jack, for coming You're in. Welcome. It's really interesting to hear about your work and how comprehensive it is, how many things go into making it and the way you think about it and the things you draw on, I think, are fascinating. So. Well, you're welcome. It's a real treat to show here at Etherton. Um, I've been coming in here for for 20 years now and it's nice to have 
to show up on the wall. I, I wish the circumstances right now yeah. with the virus thing would be would just go away. We'll find the cure yesterday, um, and I hope everybody can still come in and check it out. So well, thanks. It looks great. The show looks great. Thanks. Stay well. Okay. Hopefully.